Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our talk, Practical and Ethical Issues of AI-Assisted Threat Intelligence Analysis. I'm Avnish, and my colleague Santiago and I are going to be talking today about some of the pitfalls around using LLMs, or large language models, in analysis work. We hope this short talk will speak to analysts in the field of OSINT and threat intelligence, regardless of how much exposure you may have already had to LLM tools. With that said, we wanted to walk through just some of the questions that we as analysts should be asking. At the highest level is the question, what flaws can LLMs carry into AI-driven analysis? One, can LLMs be trusted to be accurate? Two, can LLMs be free of bias? And three, are LLMs sensitive to context? To answer these questions, we'll look at some quick examples. And for that, I'll hand it back over to Santi. Thanks, Avnish. Um, so I'm gonna kick us off by discussing accuracy. Um, and so as we can see here to start LLMs for all their hype, much of it also warranted, um, they can also still fail to do multiplication while producing convincing looking results. Um, so I'm talking through this, feel free to do that last multiplication problem on the calculator on your phone and you will see what I mean. Um, so more to the analytical issues. Um, so large language models produce answers um, to questions by attempting to complete the text of a prompt with text that is statistically likely to follow. So if you were to ask um, a large language model to find relevant Russian news articles pushing anti-Ukraine narratives about Malaysia Airlines Flight 17, and, um, for example, it's not putting you on hold and then looking up articles in the news archive, rather it's calculating what kinds of words and in what kind of order would most likely, would be most likely to follow a request for those articles. It might produce real articles that are relevant but it may also produce fake articles, the titles of which are made up of words placed in an order that resembles relevance. And you know, this is just a product of how these language models work, but it has major implications for its accuracy and effectiveness in analysis. Um, at the end of the day, unknowingly adding fake details to analysis is fundamentally counter to the overall point of what our analysis is generally meant to do and often to accurately inform decision makers. Um, and now I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague Amish to discuss bias. Thank you, Santi. Um, so in this example, uh, we will cover some potential bias. Uh, so here on the top half of the screen, we offer the LLM the same bit of text as we do in the second half. But in the way that we describe the contact, content we're giving it, we introduce some very real human bias. So in the first example, we ask the LLM to rephrase a bit of text about safety evaluations of nuclear energy. Note that when we describe the origin of the content as users who are concerned with climate change, it presents a fairly neutral rephrasing. However, if we change that, the language that some may interpret as uh, denoting a position on renewable energy sources in the uh, lower example, such as quote unquote, concerned with safe renewables, it introduces language in its rephrasing that is opposed to nuclear power. As good analysts, none of us want our analysis to be tinged with our own bias, especially when we're not aware of how it might be happening. However, an LLM, as the helpful assistant it is trained to be, will reflect back to you what it interprets your bias as being. And so we need to be highly vigilant of this particular risk when introducing LLMs to our analytical workflows. Uh, next, we'll look at how context may impact a similar situation. So here we see uh, radically different interpretations that an LLM offers about the prospects of a financial services firm, even when the underlying balance sheet data being analyzed is unchanged. In the first example on the left, we provide the following context. The year is 2007, and the firm's name is Lehman Brothers. Accurately, and perhaps too kindly, it describes the company's financial outlook as uncertain. Nothing wrong with that, sounds like fair analysis. Now say we change that context, and on the right, uh, the year is now not 07, but 2023, and Lehman Brothers is actually Goldman Sachs. Suddenly, the LLM believes that the company with the same underlying balance sheet data has, quote unquote, strong future prospects. Here again, uh, we see how an analytical output can entirely flip based off not any change in the data provided or the analysis being done, but purely the context in which it is presented. And uh, for the rest of our presentation, hand it back to Santi. Thanks, Avnish. So for the whole host of issues that we just went through, um, if analytical products or analytical work is completed 
exclusively or predominantly through the use of LLMs. Um, it's our position that it needs to be labeled as such. Uh, to a point, this is about honesty and labeling of our work. And it, would, it might stray an ethical line if we were to produce analysis through and pass it off as if it's the same quality and accuracy as were completed and reviewed by several layers of humans. Um, for example, there are countless reports in the media of LLM producing fake citations. Um, recently, an attorney in a lawsuit was admonished by a judge for using an LLM to draft a motion. Um, the LLM referenced and generated citations to several non-existent cases, and now that attorney is potentially going to be sanctioned by the court. Um, and uh, next slide, please. Um, though, overall, we don't want to take um, entirely take away from how much LLMs offer tremendous opportunities for enhancing and speeding up intelligence analysis, um, be that in creating large Boolean searches, um, custom SQL queries, translating text, to name a few examples. But fundamentally, LLMs cannot replace the work of an analyst in creating thorough and detailed intelligence analysis. Um, as we've laid out today, replacing an analyst with an LLM not only reduces the quality and accuracy um, of analysis, but it poses a variety of ethical challenges that we've yet to resolve as a community of intelligence analysts. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for listening, um, and we are happy to answer any questions in Slack.